Hello and welcome to our online worship for the fourth Sunday before Lent. My name's Jo Neary and I'm the team vicar in the Beminster team and it's really good to be with you. Oh, it's been horrible. <laughs> We've all had COVID. Um, all of us, the whole family have had COVID. Um, and all at different times, one after the other. So we've just felt like we've been in quarantine for years. But no, it has only been, um, I think, 10 days now. Uh, but we have another week or so to go. But anyway, it's good to be with you online. And uh, hopefully I'm released back into the, uh, the world next tomorrow. Uh, my 10 days will be up tomorrow. Um, yeah, but we've all been poorly and we felt really grotty. And uh, thank you to those who sent good wishes and flowers and deliveries of goodies and looked after us it's been really nice but yeah be glad to see the back of this so there we are but it's good to be with you and the sun is shining currently as we're recording and uh, spring is springing and hopefully you are well and hopefully you haven't had covid this week and hopefully you've been able to be out and about in your garden perhaps and uh, beginning to see the signs of spring around us we're in the gap at the moment between our epiphany season, which ended with Candlemas on Wednesday this week, and uh, Lent, which is coming at the uh, beginning of March. So we have a month here where we sit in ordinary time uh, as we prepare for Lent. So this is the first Sunday back in ordinary time. So let's prepare to worship God. Grace, mercy and peace from God, our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Our hymn comes from the musicians of St Martin in the Fields. We come to our prayers of penitence. 
Jesus says, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore to us the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We pray the collect prayer for the fourth Sunday before Lent. Let us pray. O God, you know us to be set in the midst of so many and great dangers, that by reason of the frailty of our nature we cannot always stand upright. Grant to us such strength and protection as may support us in all dangers and carry us through all temptations. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. And a collect prayer for the Queen on the 70th anniversary of her accession to the throne. Let us pray. Almighty God, the fountain of all goodness, bless our Sovereign Lady Elizabeth, our Queen, and all who are in authority under her, that they may order all things in wisdom and equity, righteousness and peace, to the honour and glory of your name and the good of your church and people. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Our contributors to the service today are Sean and Ian Robinson. And so we listen to today's reading. Reading for Sunday, the 6th of February. Hear the Gospel of Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. One day, as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, with the people crowding round him and listening to the word of God, he saw at the water's edge two boats, left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from shore. And he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signalled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knee and said, Go away from me, Lord, I am a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken, and so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid, from now on you will catch men. So they pulled their boats up on the shore, left everything, and followed him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. It's me <laughs> leading the reflection on our reading today. And I wonder, as you listened to that story from Luke's Gospel of Jesus first teaching from the boats and encouraging the fishermen to go out for another try at catching fish, and then the miraculous catch of fish and the subsequent calling of the disciples. I wonder what made you think or what made you question in that passage? I wonder what Jesus said as he used their boat as a kind of stage for his teaching. 
already so early on in his ministry he was teaching to so many people that it was easier to be on the boat than on the shore and I guess to use that natural kind of uh, mag magnification of sound amplification that's the word I'm looking for of sound that water provides I'm always struck by that when we swim uh, at Lyme Regis early in the morning it's very easy to hear what people are talking about as they swim and chat in the sea the sound carries so easily over the sea but I wonder what Jesus was teaching about what was he talking about what was he encouraging people to know about God and then that invitation to Simon Peter to put the boats out and cast the nets into the sea again. I wonder really what Simon Peter's response was. Um, I know what, it, what the response I get from my uh, family, perhaps, when I remind them to put their washing in the washing basket. <laughs> or have they got their school lunch? Uh, to be asked to do something that you've already done can be frustrating. Uh, to be nagged is also frustrating, but uh, to be asked to do something that has borne already no result seems annoying, perhaps, or ridiculous. I wonder what Simon Peter really thought at the man who encouraged him to try and fish again. And then that reaction, that really intriguing reaction that Simon Peter has when he sees that miraculous catch of fish is to fall on his knees as a sinner. Is he just so overwhelmed by the miracle, by the activity of God and by the recognition that Jesus is someone more than just a wise teacher? He just has to fall to his knees and, and declare his sinfulness and his unworthiness. It's a similar reaction, I think, to when angels visit, that people are scared and the angels say, do not be afraid. And in fact, that's what Jesus has to say to Simon Peter. Don't be afraid. From now on, I will make you fish people. So I just wonder what was going through his mind. And then finally the question I'm left with is what was so compelling about Jesus? What had they heard him say? I know they'd seen him do this miraculous catch of fish but something must have been more than that, that they were willing to give up their livelihoods and their activities and follow him. Something so compelling that were willing to change the course of their lives really makes me wonder. And when we wonder in scripture, I think that's a really useful thing because it draws us into bits of the passage that are perhaps useful for us or help us to think about our faith. So how do you think about your faith in relation to the story in Luke? I'm curious about what the good news is of Jesus to those people who heard it then and and I'm curious, actually, to know what is good news to the people not within our church communities, but outside. You know, actually, what do they really want to hear about? Do they want to hear that they are loved? That's what I like to hear. Or do they want to hear about the saving power of God? Or do they want to hear about the peace that knowing God will bring? Or do they want to hear about the way we live day by day that will transform the world around us? What good news can we offer to our friends, our family and our communities? What can we share that would be compelling for them? This story reminds me of the abundance and generosity of God. This miraculous catch of fish was so exuberant, so excessive that it threatened to sink two boats. What is excessive and exuberant in God's generosity to you? I think for me it's love. God's generosity of love to me is always amazing that he knows us and loves us. But I'm also intrigued, of course, by that, that cry of sinfulness from Peter. Do we acknowledge our sin and, and do we ask for God's forgiveness? We do it every time we worship. We've done it already this morning together. But sometimes it does us good to remember our humility and to come down on our knees in front of God and say, you know, I need you. I need you to transform me. And then what are we going to do to follow Jesus in our lives? Where does that call come to us in the time of life we're in now? Perhaps we experienced a call in our lives years ago, but, but our situations have changed. They do. Different things have come. When I was called to uh, follow God and to be ordained, I didn't have a husband, I didn't have any children. I lived a very different life and that vocation has had to kind of be shaped and transformed as I also became a wife and a mother 
and uh, we're embedded in a different community. How is your vocation changing and shaping and what might God be requiring of you now? If God, if Jesus comes to us today in the situations where we find ourselves, meets us where we are as he met the fishermen where they were, does something miraculous and generous in our lives and then calls us to follow him. What would that look like for us today? Perhaps if you have a moment, you might want to hear that story again. Perhaps go back on the video or read it for yourself. And don't forget to wonder. And don't forget to ask God to draw you into that passage for how it might speak to you today. Amen. So we continue by affirming our faith using the words of the creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We come to our prayers of intercessions. Let us pray. I will praise you, O Lord, with all my heart. Before the gods I will sing your praise. I will bow down towards your holy temple and will praise your name for your love and your faithfulness. For you have exalted above all things your name and your word. When I called, you answered me. You made me bold and stout-hearted. Let us pray for the church and for the world and let us thank God for his goodness. Holy Lord, you promised through your Son to hear us when we pray in faith. We give you thanks that we are able to gather as people of Christ in your name and share in fellowship your good news. Lord of nations, uphold those across the world who are living and dying in fear, living and dying in want, living and dying in darkness those displaced by war, intolerance and natural disaster. Guide our world leaders to govern responsibly and work to seek the common good, that humankind may love and honour one another as Christ loves us. We particularly hold Myanmar and Ukraine in our prayers at this time. Loving Lord, shine your light in the darkest corners of the world so that those who suffer and are afraid can feel your ever-loving presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of justice, give wisdom to our Queen and her government that they may govern with integrity in the ways of justice and peace. Walk with the communities that we live and work in, and with our visitors who come here. Give grace to our school communities, that they may hear the message of your good news. Help us to show in all we do that by your gospel we are saved. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of ages, Strengthen and guide our bishops, Karen and Andrew, and Stephen as he prepares to take up his post. Grant strength to our own team, David, Joe, Fiona. Uphold our partner priests, lay licensed ministers, church wardens, lay pastoral assistants, our children's workers, our singers and ringers across the team, and our music makers, as well as those who support our clergy in their mission. 
Help us to understand our own personal ministry, vocation or calling as your chosen people, so we live our lives in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of glory, comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind or spirit. In a time of silence, we call to mind those known to us. Grant them hope in their troubles, and may they and those who minister to them feel the power of your embrace. May they find strength in your loving care through our actions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you, good Lord, for the lives of the dearly departed, and pray for those who mourn. In a moment of silence, we call to mind those known to us. May we, surrounded by so great a cloud of witness, walk in their footsteps and be fully reunited with them in your everlasting kingdom. Comfort and strengthen the bereaved that they feel your ever-loving presence in their darkest moments. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of light, in this new week, give us grace to be challenged and changed, that we may start anew to share the good news of the boundless riches of Christ. Give us ears to hear you speak to us, as you hear us when we speak to you. We ask that our prayers are heard in the boldness and confidence granted to us through faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here I am. Send me. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We join our prayers together in the words that Jesus taught us praying. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you for joining us for worship. Take care, stay safe, and we'll see you again very soon. Bye-bye.